What's up, beautiful people? It's Naz here. Thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about one product store or general store. The amount of time that I get asked, should I should, should I, start I start a general, general store? store? Should I start a one product store? How about, How about niche store? How about this? How about that? How about this? I'm gonna clarify all that stuff today. Before we get started, I'm gonna be giving away a 20 minute consultation call, uh, you know, to someone. Uh, today is Sunday when I'm posting this video. So I'm gonna be announcing the person by Wednesday. Whenever you win the consultation call, I'm gonna tag you. So this is what you gotta do. Um, in order to win a consultation call with me, we can cover anything you need. You need to review your store, your products, your ads, or whatever. Uh, all you gotta do is make sure you go and follow me on Instagram, then comment on my last uh, post that I have, what type of videos you want me to make on YouTube. Also make sure you like this video. And last thing you need to do is DM me the word consultation call and just wait till Wednesday. And on a Wednesday, I'm going to go ahead and tag you on a post on my story. Uh, whenever you win the consultation call, make sure you do that. And let's get into this video. First of all, just to make it clear in this video, I'm going to be convincing you why you should be starting a general store. If you're just getting started with drop shipping, there's a lot of people reaching out to me, asking me, Hey, should I do a general store? But general stores are dead or this or this. I personally actually scale a lot of my products on general store. I recently started a niche store, uh, not just because I'm, I, you know, it's better or the conversion is better. It's just because I was bored with my general store. There's no reason I was just bored with the general stores that I've had. So I decided I'm just going to niche store. I've done one product store again, but the reason I did it, it was because I was bored with my general store, not because it was not converting, not because it was not, um, you know, uh, it was profitable or any of that. And let me tell you, if you're just getting started and you don't have crazy amount of time to just build these one product store by domain, build one product store by domain. It doesn't work. The first product most likely won't work. There's all these people out there on YouTube telling you that you need to start a one product store when they don't necessarily work on a first try or a second try or a third try or any of that, especially if you're getting started, that could be very, very frustrating. The chances are the first 20 products that you've ever test is not going to be a winning product. If you're just getting started, this is just a reality of the game. I'm here to keep it real with you guys. Okay. In the beginning, you're learning, you're learning. I look at all these as a learning process. You know, you're going to learn to make better creatives. You're going to learn how to put better product pages together and all that stuff. So that can be very time consuming. And that's one of number one reason why I would not start with a one product store. If you're just getting started with drop shipping, here's some pros and cones that I put together about one product store and general store. I'm going to go through them and I'm going to get in, get to explaining why you should not start a one product store and why you should be starting a gen general store. One of the things that people talk about is that one product store, the chances of becoming a winning product is higher and they have higher conversion rate. Now I gotta disagree with the, with the fact that it, the higher chances of becoming a winning product. The reason is the products that the products that we're selling are for impulse buyers. I personally teach low ticket drop shipping, which means the products we're selling are under 60 bucks. Now that means that people don't vendor around my store. I've downloaded Hotjar. If you don't know what that is, it's an app that you can download on your Shopify store. It shows you exactly what people do when they click on your ads from the time they click on your ads and then get, they go into your store. What do they do when I have a winning product? I just kind of like just watch people what they do. Maybe about two, three percent of people actually get out of my product page and click on other web, like other pages of my store. Why would I worry about the 3%, but 97% of people that are already decided that are going to buy, they would go to my store, buy and leave. People don't think about it that much. When is there, when the product is $30, $40, they're just like, eh, buy, leave is not something that makes them think a little bit more. I notice when you go over, when the price goes over 60, $70, that's when people actually start thinking, okay. I got to think about it. Let me see if this website is legit. Let me see. Let me see their refund policy. Let me see this. But when you're selling products that are 30, $40, nobody really cares about going to the, your other pages of your store and think too much or over or question the store. Okay. So that's number one reason why really the conversion rate, 
it's not that different. So I've tested in one product store and the same product in one product and in a general store. The conversion was like barely any difference. And uh, honestly, even if it's different, I don't think it's because of the one product store. It's just the luck. Number two uh, that I hear about the pros is that, oh, you grab data for this product so you can scale it longer. Not necessarily. Uh, and also a lot of people think that they could make it a niche store or sell related products. Again, here's another thing. With TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, the platform is so smart these days that you don't really ever have to worry about the data. Even though they talk about not tracking people and all that stuff, they still track people. They still know exactly what you like. That's what you're still getting targeted with the things that you even barely ever thought about like two days ago at your grandpa's house, you know? Um, so that's not, that's one thing that data doesn't really, it doesn't exist. I actually noticed that brand new ad accounts do much, 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 much better for me compared to the ad accounts that I already like, you know, had a lot of sales on. Uh, that being said though, uh, one thing about if you consistently find a winning products on, on an account, the chances of you finding a winning products on that account is higher. But I also noticed that brand new accounts do much better than an old account that didn't perform if that makes sense. So data doesn't really matter. So I don't really see any benefit with starting in one product store just because of that either. Now, these are the things that really, really stop me from wanting to do a one product store. If I'm doing one product store, I can't test any other products. Um, I have general store. I can test 10 products if I want to, and I can put it in one store, put, put them all in one ad account and test all of them at the same time. And no, it does not affect your data. I know a lot of people ask me this question. Does it affect my uh, data? No, pixel is this, like people talk about seasoning their pixel and all that stuff, but it doesn't really matter. Is this little code and even TikTok and Instagram, Facebook, all of them, they said that most of your data is kept inside the campaign. So it doesn't really affect the other campaign consistently. Even if you have completely different niches, I've literally scaled three products, completely different niches. And like, I'm talking about the opposite, like in the same store with no problem, like is it does not, they don't affect each other. So don't worry about all that stuff. If they are going to affect the pixel, if they're going to mix up, the mess up the pixel, it does not happen. It doesn't work that way. Another issue that I have in one product store is, uh, not being able to bundle with any products. No, like you can't test upsell. So once you have a winning product, um, if you're familiar, you can do upsell post purchase upsells, which is one of my favorite thing. It really, really increase your uh, AOV with average order value. Um, but what happens when one product store is, let's say if you have one product and maybe you have another product that you want to use as an upsell, but you can't really test multiple products to see what people actually buy. Uh, with upsells, the same as dropshipping, you have to actually test multiple products to see what product people are most into, if that makes sense. So that's another thing. It's just not my thing because I can't do that upsell. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now let's talk about why I think you should start your own general store and test all products together. Now, not all general store need to be tacky or look ugly or any of that. You can make it super clean, super nice, super nice product page. You can do that. They don't have to look bad. They don't have to, you know, be questionable. Don't worry about that. Now, number one reason that I really like general store is you can test a lot of products at the same time. You want to test 10 products at the same time? No problem. All you got to do is focus on the creatives and get someone to do your product pages for five, six, seven dollars a product page. Actually, I pay 10, eight, eight dollars, I think. Um, number two is that you can scale many products at the same time. You're not limited to one product and you have to test, you know, you ha you got to have another store with another product and then another ad account and everything. You have to technically get to support people. You have to hire more people to manage the other store. Why would I do that? You know, like it's just so much work. It's so much like back and forth. I would have one store that I can, you know, consistently scale multiple products in. Uh, it just doesn't make sense when it comes to drop shipping to low, t low, you know, ticket drop shipping with high ticket. I kind of understand because, uh, people in that question more. So it's a whole different story. Another thing, not only that you can scale a lot of products together is higher AOV because now you can bundle a product with other products. So what I like to do, not only I have my main product, I like to have better offers. So let's say if I'm selling something skin related, I like to bundle it with a diff on a product page. I like to bundle it with a different skincare product or hair product or something, and then come up with a new price that could basically increase the AO AOV, which you're still paying for to get one sale, but you're selling more product to the same 
person, which helps you uh, bring your profit margin a little bit higher. Uh, that's another thing of my favorite. I like to do a lot of uh, bundling, a lot of, you know, up, different upsells, different kind of uh, things that I can advertise to the same pay person. Uh, we do SMS bump, which again, we send out this like different kind of product, like offers of the same niche to the same person, just to, you know, these are the things that we do. Uh, we do a lot of email marketing and stuff. Again, with one product you, store, you can't really go as deep and advertise different products that are related to that product, but it's just like something that I don't find as beneficial. I get it if someone wants to start a brand and someone wants to consistently like focus on one product, but I personally think when you're starting a drop shipping store is not necessarily at all to start a one product store. Honestly, it's such a waste. To me, I just, I, it's just not my thing. I, I mean, it works. It's just a lot of work and a lot of frustration of testing so many different domains, more money, more time, and all that stuff. Some people believe that when you have a general store, the product can die off a little bit faster. I don't believe that. Uh, I don't think it's, there's any difference. Like I said, I've, I've been scaling testing products since 2016. I know exactly the difference, you know, if there's a difference between the one product or a general store, we've done all of it. We've done niche, we've done general, we've done one product store. They're all work. It's just the fact of how can you be efficient? How can you optimize your time? How can you do more uh, without doing more? So that's like my, um, me convincing you to start a general store instead of doing a one product store. Uh, this is my personal opinion. Again, nothing against people that do one product store. It just, less work in my opinion um and hope this video was helpful if you guys like these kind of videos uh let me know in a comment down below that uh what kind of questions you have what are you what are you working on right now what do you want me to help you with on the next videos that i'm making also have a mastermind um i just launched the new one we're gonna have two calls a week. Uh, I'm going to give out 150 influencers or less to whoever that uh, signs up. You can literally contact them, try to get creatives done for your TikTok. These are all TikTok influencers. Um, and a couple other bonuses, just if you're interested in my mastermind, uh, make sure you go and DM me mastermind on my Instagram right here. A lot of people ask about budget and how much they need to start drops. I would say at least two, three thousand dollars to get started ads, you know, and mostly it's going to be for your own ads. You know, like it's not like you can't start dropshipping with no money. If you, you that's something I tell people, don't start a business if you don't have money saved that you could put aside and um, think, hey, this is the money that is my for my business that I'm going to start. Don't start it. You would have want to have a money that you don't really care about, you know, spending as of right now, because that's a business. After all, dropshipping is a business just because it's online. It doesn't mean that it's not a real business. Thank you again for watching. Um, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye bye.